Here's a little secret. The difference between amateur design and professional design doesn't really have to do anything with what tools they're using or what was the budget, not even how talented the designer was. The truth is all you need is to understand some key design principles and also how to avoid some of the most common mistakes junior designers do and you'll be able to create professional designs yourself. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. We're going to take a real design that was submitted by one of you and we're going to analyze its problem and I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix them. Let's go. Okay, so this is the website that was submitted to us by Ugo. Uh, this is the Nigerian Railway Corporation, uh, which is basically like a huge company. It's like the national railway uh, in Nigeria and this website doesn't look really great. Um, it should be, probably it's a, it's a big company, it's an official government website, it should look great, but it doesn't really look great and there's a lot of problems here. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to go section by section, analyze what's not working here and how we can quickly fix it. So the first thing that I'm doing is I've opened up Figma and I've imported the design using the website to Figma plugin and that basically brought in the website into Figma. So now I can go ahead and duplicate that so that we have the original and we have the updated one. The first thing that I want to look at is the hero section. This needs to be the most important part of the page. It gives you immediately the sense of where you are and tells you the story. And this doesn't really look very well. We have this very black overlay with low quality photos in the background. The text is centered, but it's in the lower part of the screen. So the composition is really, really bad here. And we, even if we, the client doesn't have better photos, we can do something much better than this. So let's see what we're going to do. The first thing is I want to improve the quality quality of the train. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up FreePick, which is my recent uh, favorite AI tool. It has an upscaler. And what I can do here is I can go ahead and load up the original image. As you can see, it's low quality, it's pixelated. Uh, and I'm going to select it. I'm going to choose in, in the imagination none because I don't want new details here. I just want the original uh, picture looking better. I'm going to choose 4K. I'm going to upscale it. It's going to take a minute or so and you can very clearly see here in the before and after how it turned into a very sharp with all of the details. So the image already looks better. Now I'm gonna download that. I'm gonna take it into Photoshop and I'm gonna do a few things here in Photoshop. The first thing I wanna do is to change the composition a little bit, right? So I'm going to crop it. I wanna make it look like the train is coming from the corner, right? And I wanna make sure that we have some clear sky area so that we can put the text not on top of the train. So I've changed the crop and now I'm going to use Photoshop um, generative fill to use AI to kind of like uh, complete the rest of the image. So let's do that. And now we have the rest of the sky and the train track. That's great. Now I'm going to use Photoshop's replace sky because the sky here is a little bit gloomy, right? I think we can go with something a little blue or a little bit more dramatic, right? So that it looks a little bit more uplifting. The last thing I'm going to do is to add this gradient and set that into uh, overlay. And you can see that this really makes the photo more dramatic. The train becomes lighter, the sky becomes more colorful, and now the photo is really much more dramatic than it was before. And I think that's really, really great. Okay, now let's back into Figma and let's place our new photo. And already you can see that this looks much, much better. Okay, next let's think about the typography. Uh, I personally love really big impactful text. So let's turn that text into uppercase and let's make it much, much bigger. And now I see that we have the train. Maybe we can make the train to go a little bit on top of the text, which would be pr pretty cool. Also, I think that, you know, just using the word affordable, doesn't really make sense. I think maybe you want to add something like Nigerian Railway is and also having like a smaller text with a larger text would create a little bit more interest in the design itself. So now we have a nicer composition. It's clear, the message is clear. Let's bring, select just a train and bring it on top. And this is really great. I personally love when you see text behind some of the objects in an image, it really creates depth as if the text is part of the image right now. And I think this makes this much more powerful. I'm going to add a small gradient to 
make it look like as if the text has a little bit of shadow on top of it and that adds a little bit even more realism to this effect. Now I can play around with this and maybe make the text a little bit bigger. And uh, yeah, now I like this composition. And already I think that the hero, if you look before and after, I think that you can see that the hero is much, much better right now. And this was really easy, nothing required. I don't need new images, just with tools that are available to all of you and you can improve that. Now next, let's take a look at the navigation. There's a few things here that I don't like. First of all, let's take a look at the logo. Now there's a few things with the logo. The logo has many details, three lines of text, and it takes so much space that the, the navigation, it just has a lot of white space and empty space in the navigation, so that's boring. So let's go ahead and clean that logo up a little bit. I think that even if the client doesn't change the logo for real, I think that for the website, we can create a, a cleaner logo that is a little bit more vertical. So let's remove all the decorations at the bottom and let's change the word corporation. Let's just take the co and try to change the composition into two lines. I think that would make the logo, now let's add a dot, I think that would make the logo much, much cleaner in the area that we have and so the navigation won't use so much space. And let's see how that looks like. Okay, so now we have a cleaner, simplified logo and we can go ahead and clean up and organize the rest of the navigation. I'll also change the small arrows that we have here into uh, white arrows. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. And actually, you know what? Now I'm seeing that the Nigerian railway, the logo black on that dark green doesn't look very well. So let's change that to white and that'll be much more contrasted. So now I think that the logo and the whole navigation is much cleaner. We can tighten up so it doesn't take as much space as it used to before. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I've removed the bar that we had at the top. So we had this yellow bar, which basically told us to fill in a survey. Now that grabs this yellow bar at the top of the screen, just takes up so much attention. It Basically, there's a super important concept in design called hierarchy, right? What is the most important? And when you have on a dark hero section, a bright yellow strip, it grabs all of the attention. And that's definitely not the most important thing here, right? So instead of having a gr uh, yellow strip at the top of the screen, let's just turn that instead into kind of like a, a pop-up window that might pop up just like a few seconds after you load uh, the screen. Let's change it. It do probably doesn't need to be yellow and grab so much attention. We can just make it a smaller uh, pop-up window right here at the bottom right corner of this screen. Um, also help us serve you better. Um, maybe we'll add a subtext to this, another line of text that would make sure and ensure people that it's not gonna take so much of their time. So maybe like won't take more than two minutes uh, just to make sure that people realize that they, yeah, otherwise I, I think people are just going to ignore it. Uh, I'm gonna use green for the call to action. So now I think we have much better hierarchy, right? It's still visible, it still calls to action, but it's not the main thing here. And now I think that the hero section is much better. We've cleaned up the navigation so it doesn't take as much space. We removed the bar, the call to action bar that took too much attention. We've improved the image and the typography and that looks much, much better. So let's continue. The next problem that I wanna address in this website is that the headings of each of these section, each one of them actually looks completely different. Brief history, latest news, um, COVID-19, notice that each of them has completely different design. Why do you have to invent a new design for each section? What you want in professional design, that's so simple and so many people make this mistake, is just consistency. If you've decided that section headings look a certain way, just be consistent with it. You can switch things up from time to time, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single section, right? So let us let me create a design, let's decide on let's say bold font here, um, maybe uppercase, and maybe for a decorative purposes, we can also add this kind of like a green line divider just to divide the space nicer. 
And now that we have this, we can use this design for each one of the other sections as well. And immediately it will improve the consistency of the design and it's going to look much nicer. Okay, the next thing I want to address in this brief history section that we have here is that number one, the lines are too long. They're just so long that it it's dip, makes it difficult to read. You don't want to have lines with so many words in them. And the second thing is it's kind of boring. So maybe we can add some images, right? Maybe I can Google and if I would talk to the clients, some of the historic photos of the Nigerian trains and uh, let's but what I really want to do is shorten the paragraph so that we have, you know, shorter lines, and it will be more readable. So I'm going to basically create here something like two columns, we can rearrange the paragraphs, make sure that they're not too long. And then I'm just going to Google some, you know, Nigerian railway, uh, historic pictures, I'm gonna find some things that I think make sense in this context, and I'm going to put them here. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of um, a little bit of a frame, so it looks like a, a photo with a little bit of a drop shadow. It looks like a, you know, like maybe like a Polaroid photo that we've placed here on the screen. So it looks a little bit retro, which is what we're going for in this section. And uh, yeah, I think this history section looks much better right now, much more readable with a little bit more visual interest. Okay, next, this latest news. There's two things that basically the design here is okay, but there's two critical mistakes here. Number two, we've got cards, each of them is in a different size. So that's already looks off balance. The second thing that we have here is this is latest news, and I'm missing the dates here. I don't even know is this news from last week or last year, I don't know. So very simply, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to number one, make sure that both cards are aligned and have the same size. And actually, you know what, one more thing that I would like to do is to make the headings a little bit more uh, bigger, so that we have a little bit more contrast in the typography. And besides that, let's go ahead and add a little bit of a date. And now those cards look much better. Next, we've got our services. Now, my main problem with this services section is this, we've got four different cards here. And when I'm looking here, it's very difficult to know whether this tourism card is referring to the image that we see on the top or the image that we see below. So this is a bad design, you know, to, to one thing that we do in design is we group things together so that we know, oh, this goes with this or this goes with this. And when things are just separated like this, it's, it makes it very difficult or confusing. So we don't know if now we're reading about tourism or now we're reading about tourism. And this is just bad. So it's going to be very easy if we just combine them into four cards where it's clear what text and what headlines go with what image. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, it's going to be very easy, we're going to create the cards, we're going to crop the images to be at the top of the cards, um, and then just add the text. And like we've said in the last uh, section, we want to make sure the cards all have the same, uh, the same size so that they are aligned. And Yep, this looks very good. I can go ahead and add a little bit of round corners and a little bit of a border for the image. So it looks inside of this little card that we have here. And yeah, I think this makes the whole section looks much clearer and makes it obvious what image goes with what text. Okay, so now we have the services section. And it's time to look at this call to action section. Now this call to action section says comfortable, safe, reliable train service. And it's on a background of nightscape. To me, wh why are we seeing city at night? What's it got to do with uh, comfortable, safe and reliable train? I don't know, to me, it doesn't mean anything. On top of that, we've got the, again, new styles for <laughs> new styles for our typography, yellow, uh, book now all of the the buttons that we want to book for, I think we can use a much better image and composition here. Now, in this case, if the client doesn't have 
photos, I would try to just give them an idea of what I'm looking for. So again, I'm going to head into uh, Picasso and I'm going to try and generate some images of just like a group of Nigerian friends traveling on the train and having a good time together. I'm going to try to find an image that actually looks modern and looks like possibly it might be um, an actual photo from the train. So we don't see exact details. Um, and also that would allow me a place to add some of the text that I need. So I like this image, I'm going to upscale it. Um, as I did in Photoshop, I'm going to add a little bit of area at the top so that we can have space to add some of the text on top of it. And I'm going to bring that here. Now I think that look feels a little bit more safe and friendly and reliable and comfortable. You see them, they're having fun, they like the train. So I think this looks much better. To make the heading um, more readable, I think we'd like to add some kind of a gradient to create more contrast and make sure that the text is readable. So I'm going to add a gradient. We've been using a lot of the green here. So let's try and add green gradient. Now, I know I've said multiple times on this video, be consistent, be consistent. But in this case, I think that we can break the consistency just because this is a different section, a call to action. It's not just another section uh, heading. Let's try to make something bolder and lighter. I think this also will contribute to the feeling of this being comfortable, safe and like a positive vibe um, section. Now, I actually like this card that goes on top of the image. I told you at the beginning, I love when things go on top of other things and it kind of adds depth, but I'm not sure we need this for the logo. Maybe we can use that for the book now and the buttons. So I'm going to remove the logo from here. I'll add it later on into the um, footer section and we can use this white card just for the book now and for the buttons. And yeah, I really like how this card now looks like it's going on top of the image. We'll take the the logo and add that. Well, we'll try multiple places. It can be here in the center, or maybe it can be down in the footer. Let's see what works better. Um, yeah, I think mm, playing around with the layout a little bit, I think I'm going to add it right here in the footer. And yeah, I'm actually happy with the redesign. Okay, so we can take a look at the before and after. And I think that with few simple adjustments, I think that this design looks much, much better. It's clearly not amateur anymore. And hey, you can do that yourself. And if you wanna learn more about web design, Check our other videos and our links below this video and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.